Okay. Yeah. So we've established that we can do this a lot faster on the CAS if you know how. All right. Do you remember what we did last time using the CAS? Not really. Uh, yeah, we created functions. So that right. We, we defined functions in it so that we'd never had to repeat ourselves. Uh, Does that seem like it might be useful? Yeah. Potentially. Yes. Okay. Here's what I suggest that you do. You can do it as a derivative, but it's actually easier if you define the derivative as a separate function, yeah. just so you can write it. Ultimately, all we care about is that. Right? So what I want you to define in there is f of x defined as that. Just just f of x is the black. Right? And then it doesn't matter what you pick, but I'm just going to pick D just for short for derivative. Right? The derivative is going to be just that guy. By the way, you're just doing that actual part. Yeah. Alright, how, how do I set up a thing, a, a definition thing? As in where you get the colon and equals? Oh, that's it, never mind. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then do I do the same with the derivative? Yeah, define the derivative. You can you could do like tell it to take the derivative of f every time, but you might as well just do it once and then call it again, yeah, so it's easier to read. Why would I do d of x? I'm not using g. Oh, we don't d of x instead of g. Well, you, you put it as three. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what the name is, just as long as you yeah, can. Yeah, no, I guess so. Like, you, you can literally write like um, Algernon if you want to call Algernon. It doesn't matter. All right, fair enough. But it's, it's just a name, so whatever. Just d is a lot shorter than Algernon. And D for derivative is the only reason I picked it. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay, now what we want is this thing. We've defined these, great. All of these inputs are the exact same. Yeah, so. So we could, don't do this yet, we could go 4, since that's what we're starting with, minus f of 4 over d of 4, and that'd be okay. That would spit out whatever it's about, 10 thirds. Yeah, and then we'd have to type it all again so and replace with 10 thirds. Do you want like a function within functions? Functions within a function. So the first thing you want to do is go 4, then go enter. Yes. So it just goes 4, 4. Yeah. Right, and now what we want is its last answer to be injected. <coughs> you do answer minus all. Answer minus function of answer over derivative of answer. How do you do So next to enter to the left, the employer. Now, if you stuff this up, that's fine. Just keep in mind you need the line before it to be four. So if you stuff it up and you get an error, delete the last line so that four is still the last line. Or the previous Wait, so line. do I just have to write F or do I have to write function? Oh, Did you define them up here, yeah? Yeah, okay, so you just have to write F, open, <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, it's just going, yeah. Right? And yeah. every time you hit enter, it'll do a new round. Yeah, so I found five, that's a big number. That's a probably a small oh. number, actually, but it's a... Go again. Go again? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, it, you'll get tired of it before the cast. Oh, so she oh get, what the hell? Get, 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 get. Damn it, I'm going to die. It's actually done. Yeah, that's the story. Right, and so if you hit enter again, it's just going to be done next one. It's starting to even delete them. Uh, 3.0. Yeah, 3.0. Do it again. It's going to be done next one. You can keep pressing it and you'll get progressively better over there. It's a lot. Right? Why do you put decimals on the way? No, oh, this one will still work. I'm just going to do the decimal version. It's a decimal. Yeah, yeah. So, so you get 3.3 recurring, 3.0 something, oh, right. and then 3.00 something. Now I'm getting three. Cool. All right. So can I take can you change that into a function? Let's go. Yeah, you can. You could define this whole thing as I don't know e or something, right? Define all that and then take that right. So, you three, could, yeah. so then you could just track in E whenever you reset. Just three. Yeah. We'd have to go four and then enter. Yeah, you'd have to go four, enter, and then E of 
answer into it. No, I'm not actually. Oh, it's only going up to three point like eventually zero to get three. Right. So if you keep hitting the button, as inevitably all of you will, because that's what people do. I stopped up. I got spent. Okay. Right. You will end up with three point zero zero something. Right. I don't think. My slot correct is three. Oh, so I just changed back oh, to your settings might be restricting how many decimals it displays. That's oh, mine was like six. Right. Six decimals? Yeah, so it'll, it'll cut off pretty quickly. Right. If you allow it to float out, it'll go to something like ten decimals or something rather. And oh, okay. it'll take you quite a couple enters before it actually goes, I give up, it's three. Yeah. Right. So hopefully it's pretty clear at this point that this thing is approaching. Oops, sorry, not that. Three. This thing is approaching three. Yeah. Right. Now, is that surprising? Uh, I mean, I don't know why. What were we trying to find out? I don't know. That was too long ago? Yeah. Right. We're trying to find the exit to that. Ah. Uh -huh. Right, which we knew. Should be three. Right? Incidentally, if you put three into this, right, you get, well, we'll put it in. So, f of three gives us zero. F prime of three gives us one. Okay, this is now three minus zero over one. What's going to happen? Three minus one. Yeah, three. three. It'll not negative three. I mean three. Just three, right? So the next one <laughs> will be three. What will happen after that? Three. Right, it'll just keep repeating three. Where are you? So this thing stabilizes, and you know you're done. Beautiful. Huh. Okay. So this thing's nice. It actually comes to a, an ending at some point, uh, apparently, or at least if you do a decimal. But that's only one. That's only one intercept. Uh, yes. So, the next uh, thing to note is did we get all the intercepts? No. no. We got one of them. Okay. How might we get the other one? Uh, maybe do. Put in like one. Right. Instead of starting with four, instead, we can start with uh, one of them. But how do we know where to start? Good question. Uh, what if we chose to do six instead of four? What's this? Minus like one. What? Hey, what happened there? Minus one. Oh yeah, minus one, minus two is two. So, oh, they should be aligned. Oh no. Close enough. It's not. It's not drawn. Right. So we could start with one instead of four, and then run the whole thing again, and eventually you'll end up with two. Wait, if you run four, if instead of four. Oh, one. So if instead of four, start with one. Yeah. It'll yeah. get closer and closer to two. But, yeah. Right. What if we chose six because we didn't know where the intercepts were? Okay. Is it possible uh, before you even do that? What happens if you pick two point five? Um, Start with two point five. See what happens. Oh, we just did it. Oh. Hold uh, on. Hold on. Okay. How do I highlight everything? Okay. It's not set up, I guess. But it's undefined, it still tells you something there. 
the gradient is zero. It that. tells you the gradient is zero there, yeah? Yeah, so. But you, other than that, no. But it tells you that you run into either a turning point or an inflection, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. With the stationary inflections, with the yep. it, tells, it tells you running some sort of stationary. Uh, no, no, it doesn't even necessarily tell you that. Yeah. Um, it could tell you that the graph doesn't even exist there. Oh, yeah. As well, so it just tells you something weird is happening. So it's not a boring point; it's an interesting coordinate. That's all it tells you. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the way this works conceptually, it takes a derivative. Uh, sorry, it takes a tangent line rather and then plots that onto the x-axis. Oh, okay. Right? Then, so that's that first move. Then it goes, okay, go up from there, or down, depending on which way it is, until you hit the um, graph again, and then repeat. <coughs> so it goes, find the tangent. When you hit the x-axis, go up from there to the graph. Then do it again. Have a tangent, and go again. Oh, Have a okay. tangent, go again. So this thing will be getting chopped closer and closer and closer to that x-intercept. Right? If we go from this way, it's the same idea, it's just chopping this way. Right? And it gets closer and closer to that. Right? If I pick 2.5, it just goes, it never hits the x-intercept, so it throws out an undefined error. Right? Mechanically, it's a divide by zero error. But what if it's like 2.6, because then it would be going oh, so that like, really far out. You know? Okay, that's a good question. Let's do that. I'm going to guess you guys haven't done this the quick way. Um, if you type out this, highlight it, and then copy it, right? Then you can just type whatever number you want to start with, and then enter, and then just paste this in again, and enter, enter. Uh, 3.8, yeah, 3.8, sorry, mine's in fracking. Um, so yeah, 3.8 is after one iteration. But if you keep going... Oh, wait. That's quite close to the 3. Oh, yeah. We get 3.24, 3.04. 3.00152, then it's 3 for me. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it settles back to three in more or less the same time as before. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I got done three point zero 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 five one. That was one I got first. What? I got that in the last one. Ah. Yeah. So that's as far as it goes. Just a joke. Three point zero zero zero. Alright, okay. Cool, all right. So if it's off, it seems like that's okay. If your estimate is potentially bad, it's not that bad potentially. Um, uh, that's fine. So will this method always work? Uh, no. No, right? Because we already showed that if we pick 2.5, we're in for a bad time. Right? So this method is not foolproof. Now instead, I ask. Uh, what do you present to the one? It's good, man. It's three. Alright. What's the x intercept? Uh, positive 3. Uh, minus 2. Wait, what? What did I just do? Uh, square root 3. Positive, right, root, positive negative root 3. Yeah. <laughs> right, what's that? Uh, one point. Wait, what is that root? Yeah, what's what the, is what's one point seven? Right, 1.7 and some change. Great. Okay. If we run this, what's it gonna do? It's gonna tell us that it's one point seven. One point seven something something something. Will it ever stop? No. If it had infinitely many decimals. No. No, it would go on forever. No. So these no. things can oh, so you could be like, oh yeah, it's cool, it's two. Or like it's one point seven. Or right, it'll like at some point you'll cut off because you'll just say, I don't care about any more accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, so if you ever wanted to know, oh, okay, what is the actual numerical value of root 3, you could do this method until you've got enough accuracy. If you wanted perfect, it's too bad, you're going to have to go infinitely long. Um, cool, this is one way that um, calculators can calculate those things. Um, sometimes they'll pull them from memory, sometimes there's other methods as well. Um, this is also one of the ways that CAS will do it. 
when it's graphing, when, you, when it's some crap thing, and you go, oh, okay, what's the x-intercept? Sometimes it'll do this by itself, and then it'll just spit out a decimal approximation. Um, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad, most of the time it's bad, because if it's a nice number like pi on 2, it won't tell you pi on 2, it'll tell you the decimal approximation of that, which is very good to do. So you have, this is where you have to be really careful about how the CAS works, because it will very commonly do these sorts of things in the background, because it doesn't know what you actually want. It just knows what its programming is. So what do we need to do? Right, if you can already do it analytically, the way algebra, then you do it that way. That's fine. But if I give you something horrendous, okay, so just for since he asked. Since you asked. There you go. Okay, I want to know what the roots of that are. Good luck with that. I have no idea how I'm going to attack that. Right, because it's got a whole bunch of annoying things in it. But I could do it approximately by doing this. So, how would you do that? Just, this is now here. It's the exact same process, just this is a bit chunkier, this is a bit chunkier, but it's still the same basic idea. Yeah, so, I just... Okay, so, you derive it, right? get whatever you get. <coughs> So I've got my original yeah, yeah, yeah. and my derivative. Great. I pick a starting number. Any example? Well, can you say zero? You could say zero, right? Because if I put in zero, that's fine. This will be a. That gives me a number. Okay, great. And then you just go through the iterations and keep going and going until it stabilizes. So what if it doesn't exist then, on like a like an actual x y axis? Okay. Oh. So, yep. So you have to do this until you get a stable number. Yeah. So you just spam it until it becomes like three. Right, so until it becomes two point two. The way we're doing it, yeah, you'd be spamming it until it's stable. You can do it in spreadsheets instead. Um, yeah. and, and then you can make it you can program it so that it just keeps going until the difference between yeah, a root um, the, the, the last and the second last figure are less than whatever threshold you pick. Yeah. So you can say less than zero point zero 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 one, so it'll be accurate to that many decimal places. So let's say if it's, let's say if our x is simple is three point two. Right, um, would it go to 3.2 or would it go to 3? If we just keep spamming it. Say again? So you, you know our x intercept is, let's say our x intercept is, x -intercept is 3.2. Yeah. If we if we work all this out and do it, would it go to 3.2, stabilize at 3.2 or would it um, just stabilize at 3? It could say, uh, so it could say why is it a whole different bunch of different things, but it, it would uh, get closer and closer and closer to 3.2. Assuming normal behavior of the curve. So it'll just get closer and closer and closer, and then at some point you get 3.1999, and then at some point you're just going to go, pretty sure this is going to 3.2. Right. It's just a matter of how many nines can you be bothered getting, or 3.200000. It's just a matter of when you call it quits. Um, cool. If I did that, what's going to happen? Uh, just X is going to be 1. It's negative 1. Right, okay. Where are the x intercepts on that? There are no, there are no right? The things yeah. hovering above the x intercept. Uh, the x axis, I should say. So, take a guess of what's going to happen with this. It's not going to be under. Something's going to go wrong, right? Exactly what depends on what number you start with. If you start with zero, it'll just immediately go undefined. If you pick anywhere else, um, it will either. So if you pick zero, it will immediately get a horizontal and then it just gives up because it's like well undefined and done. But if you start over here, it'll come down and then go to the other side. Okay? And then from here. Will it be it'll fall that? Oh, and now it's gone back to here, but then that might send it straight back there. So it can just cycle between values. Oh, no, or worse yet, yeah, it can just go back and forth forever, just rolling down the hill. <laughs> or worse yet, yeah, if you pick a really bad starting number, uh, I don't think it'll happen on this curve, but on certain curves, it can fling itself further and further away. <laughs> so these are some of the problems you have. So you can't just blindly use this, but 
if you know that there is an x intercept and you know some interval that it must be between, then you're okay. Because you know, okay, it definitely has a solution and I know that's close to this. So it's really not that useful. It's very useful for approximating things when you don't need a perfect analytical solution. Yeah, but you have to know a lot about it, or like a lot more about it than you would need. Yeah, that's true. Right. But you remember how I was saying with uh, differential equations? There's a whole bunch of differential equations that seem pretty simple to write that we just can't solve perfectly. Yeah. Same thing happens with this. There's a whole, like that thing there, if you type it into the CAS and ask it to solve it, it will either crap itself out or it'll give you a decimal approximation. That x, x to the five? Yeah, all that. If you just go, okay, solve equals zero, solve for x, it will almost certainly give you a decimal approximation. If you are set to exact, it'll probably sit there thinking for a while and then give up. Yeah. So how would you do that? And the only reason it gives up is because in the programming it says, if you get to this point, give up. Um, because it's either eaten through all its memory or it's done so many cycles and it's doing either one of those or like where it's just jumping around meaninglessly. The worst thing that can happen is that it can just happen that you can set it going and it'll just keep going. Because it's, it, it hasn't hit the threshold of memory at any point or um, it's still making progress, but it makes progress slower and slower and slower and slower, and it will either literally never get there because it's like uh, getting halfway of the remaining distance every time. So it goes half, then three quarters, then seven eighths, then fifteen sixteenths, and so on. So, so it just it will never reach. So yeah. It's yeah. Um, or it will. Uh, or it will get there, but it will take so long to get there that it'll run out of battery. Oh wow. Right, so, or it will just crash if it overflows its memory or something. Um, so there's all sorts of problems that can arise. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you don't have to be overly uh, familiar with this. Uh, what, what was it, 18 and I, I think it was. Um, so definitely, if you have not done other stuff, everything else first, don't worry about this. But it's on the syllabus. It also teaches you never to trust a cat. So that's why I think. Uh, yep. How would you set up if it was um, undefined using Newton's method? How would I do it? Yeah. Oh, with Newton's method? Uh, if, if Newton's method works, then it'll work on the cat. The cat just does these calculations faster. Yeah. Well, like, like, you know, you know, like, how would you work there? You can't. There is no solution. So you can't use Newton's method to do that? If there's no solution, how would Newton's method give you a solution? Uh, yeah. Like the answer is there is no solution, but this doesn't have the capacity to give no solution. It only has the capacity to give an answer. At some point, it might say undefined because it might have just rocked onto zero, yeah. and then it would be, oh, I've got nowhere to go, I'm done. But other than that, it would just keep rocking around. Um, you can fiddle with these as well. So, um, so if you pick, oh, worst, oh, there's also other problems as well. So, it's like if you have barely a rose, why would that say? Yeah. And if you pick a particularly bad first position, so say you're aiming for this one, and you go, okay, well, this value is pretty close to that. Yeah, x value. Pretty close. Great, I take a tangent, and I end up over there. Okay, go up, uh, go to, sorry, to there. Oh. Go to the curve and then continue. All right, so this is now over here. Okay, fine. Now go to there. Oh, that's weird. So over here, so this will come down about there somewhere. This will now eventually cycle into that solution, even though you started closer to the one you wanted. So that's another problem that can arise. You can solve for a solution that wasn't the one that you want. So there's all sorts of extra annoyances that this throws in. It seems to be a lot more problems than solutions. Well, so this was useful back in the day because this is Newton's method, so you're in the 1600, 1700 sort of period. Calculators aren't a thing. Oh. A computer is a person. Like, that's literally a job title. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, computer. Yeah, yeah. what do you do? I compute. Yeah. Like, just, oh, okay, good. That's my job. Keep going. You make an error, do that. Like, start again. Yeah. And that definitely happened. Um, yeah, so this yeah. was very much just a way of trying to calculate more digits of whatever. So you can use it to calculate um, well, all sorts of things. But 
rationals. Oh, sorry, rationals, not rationals. Non transcendentals. Uh, so, that's that. It's just a little bit of annoying for them kids. It's annoying because it's one for me. Um, so, let's say, um, let's say we have a, um, a quadratic going um, from the y to z. So, um, so, the turning point touches the y to z. I don't have a good track record. Oh, I guess. Yeah, oh, that will. Uh, that's not that's a relation. Is that even a relation? Just redefine this relation as a function. And then it will work. Using Newton's method? Yeah, the problem is you've got a double group. So, you would define it as for a particular issue. But you must have to take that issue on some other function. Yeah, there's a question that I've lost. It's more like. That kind of looks like an excellent Right, undefined. Uh, from there, there so one, from there down is F2. F1 does not have any accessory steps. F2 does, so you can just use F2. For a parabola. So you can fiddle with the question to make sure. But it's still the nose. There you go. Yeah, that's like it.